Hi and welcome to tutorial 135 and this tutorial really follows the content of tutorial 134 so if you haven't seen tutorial 134 then it might be a good idea to look at that first but essentially what we're doing and what, what I was asked if it were possible that um, we would have a list of trades formatted in a specific way perhaps generated by a spreadsheet. And in the first video, what we did, we copied that into easy language, and then we verified the program and that went ahead and issued some order tickets. So what we're gonna do in this uh, tutorial, instead of putting it in the easy language, we're gonna put it in a form. So just to give you a quick example, got the form here and uh, we're gonna put in some trades. You can see that I've already got those copied into my copy buffer and uh, not sure i think they may be okay let's just increase that a little bit um okay let's just go for these so when you send them what happens is we get the opportunity here to confirm the order and uh, by doing that you'll see that they're generated now with this i suggest that you use your simulated account this tutorial what i've done is kept it deliberately simple because i I could start introducing order providers and position providers and so on to keep track of things. But I just wanted to show you the very basics so that it would be easier for you to replicate that and then to get to do things a little more complicated. So what I've done to start with is created the indicator that's going to be available for download. What I've also got here is a dev indicator. And what I've done is just copied into that the namespaces and some of the names of the variables and input. Now I was asked, how do you know which namespaces? So one good way of doing that, if for example, you know that you're gonna be using Stream Reader or Stream Writer, what you can do is if you go to the dictionary and then you type in Stream Writer like so, and um, you'll then see that that is in the elsystem.io namespace. So you can include that here. And similarly for other things that we're gonna do, Okay, now this program is going to be using the same method that we created in tutorial 134. So what I'm going to do is just copy this straight away into the new program. Now what we also need to do is create a form because we're going to be using a form to input the information. So the way we do that is I'm going to right click on my program and I'm going to say add form. There we have the form. And then to the form, I'm going to click on the toolbox. And what we need is a button and move that down. And what we also need is a text box. So there we go. And I'm just going to reformat that. We also we want to make sure that uh, for that text box, we have the uh, properties such that this is going to be multi-line and uh, we just need to increase the height. So uh, what we also need is for the button, we want to have an event and that is going to be when the button is clicked. So I'm just going to go into here and do that. And then when we go back to our program, we will find that we have a button click event. And what I'm going to do is just move this. It doesn't really matter where it is in the method order, but just so that we're doing things the same as in the original program, what I'm going to do is just copy that here. And this button is where we're going to grab the information from the form. We're then going to somehow, we're going to write that to an external file. We're going to read it from an external file line by line, convert that information into a token list, and then use that token list information to send the order to the method we've already created. Now, this information here is actually just peculiar to the method. So what I'm going to do is just go down here and put it in there. And then for a method, you cannot have the default values. So, so I'm just going to get rid of those like so. Okay. So having done that, um, what we now need to do is get the information from the text box. The button has been clicked. We assume something's been put in the text box. Just to sort of reassure ourselves here, what I'm going to do is just print the information. So I'm going to go print quotes text box, and then the information is going to be text. Well, in fact, let's just go back to our form, the text box. If we just look at the properties and you'll see that 
the name of that is Textbox One. We could change that. In fact, in the other in the uh, the programs available for download, I'm going to change the, the text here as well. But just for speed, I'm not going to do that in this video. So let's go back there. So it's text box one, and then the particular property is text, like so. Now I mentioned we're going to be using a token list. So what we need to do is initialize a token list and you can see here that we've, we're calling it list so what we need to do is say list equals token list dot and then we're going to use create and i'm not going to put anything in it for, for the moment so I'm just going to leave that there and what we're going to do is we're going to write using a steam writer called write trade list this is the variable name that we've created so we're going to say well, let's just copy that write trade list is equal to stream writer dot create and then we're going to put in the the name of the file and this is uh when you're doing this you'll need to make sure that this is somewhere where you have permissions to write to your disk so users marty documents and then the name of the actual file which i'm calling tutorial uh, 135 i'm just going to call it 135a in this uh, case just to be different from the downloadable program and then false. And uh, you can, again, if you want to know more about the Streamwriter, you can right click there, go to definition, and uh, then you'll get some information and some of the syntax and all the methods. You can also go to the dictionary area and search for that there. So having initialized this uh, Streamwriter, what we're now going to do is we're going to write to it. So we're going to say write trade list, it's going to copy that dot and uh, you'll see we have a right we want to put in the information from the text box so we're just going to copy this then having done that we need to close it so we're just going to go right trade list again and this time we're going to close it and we need to have brackets like so so having written the information to the trade list what we now need to do is read the trade list and again we've created a, a stream read trade list so we're going to say read trade list equals stream reader dot create and we put in the, the same the name the same name as the uh, program that we've written to like so and now uh, what, one of the things you can do with the stream reader is read this line by line by line and clearly the information that we were putting in the little box was a, a line by line with the name of the uh, the stock then the entry price and other information so let's do that line by line by line so what we can use we can say while not and then we're looking for the end of the um the file and then there is something here end of stream so that becomes true when we get to the end of the file so while not i'm going to begin and end somewhere so let's go back up to just below the begin and the first thing we want to do we're now going to be using the token list each case which as you know we've called list and uh, to start we're just going to clear that so we're going to go list dot clear and now we can populate it with the information from the the line and as we go through this thing we're going to go through each line so we're going to say list value is equal to read trade list dot and then again if we go down here read line you might be wondering why this thing is self-completing and that is because in tools options i've got this set up as auto complete normally i think it's not a good idea but uh, when you're doing something this um, thing such as some um, stream reader and uh, etc it's useful to see what options you've got so the information from the line is now in there and essentially this information is exactly as we want it so what we're going to do we're going to pass this to our method which is the thing that i just copied from tutorial 134 and the first thing is list zero which in other words the first element which is going to be set to be the the stock and then we need uh, the next one list one list two list three etc the only thing to be aware of is that these things are formatted as strings so we need to go string to number and uh, we're going to do that for the numeric information so i'm just going to copy this and then change the numbers so that'll be list two list three in fact i think that's the last one because we've only got four inputs so it's going to get rid of this and now just to show you what that information is like we can set up a little loop so we can say so for value one zero to list count minus one 
that's in other words all the elements in the list we're going to go uh, begin print let's just uh, let's just keep this uh, simple let's just put in list square brackets and then the value 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 one i've done it slightly different in the downloadable program okay having done that what we can do is just close the the read list so we're just going to go um read trade list dot close like so and uh, once we've done that um, what we can do is change the message in the uh, text box and an appropriate phrase might be something like enter trade list so let's uh, let's verify that see uh, if we made mistakes okay we're missing a square bracket on line 56 we are indeed let's uh, let's do that again now this one is already applied to a chart you can see it here the dev version what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel all the open orders so I'm just going to right click in the trade manager and I'm just going to say cancel all open orders and I'm just going to say yes and I'm going to turn the uh, actual program off here uh, and I'm going to go to this new program formatting the two things we're going to do first of all, we're going to say enable order placement objects and the second thing is we're going to put my simulated account number in the inputs so that is now applied to the chart but what you'll notice is that the form does not appear and that is because so far we haven't uh, told the form to appear and what we're going to do uh, we're going to do that using a once statement so we're going to say once begin and and should and it'll show us uh, all various options I'm going to say show like so and uh, just to make sure that I've got some possible trades to to use I'm just going to copy this information here in fact uh, I'm just going to get rid of the spaces I'm not sure if that would make a difference maybe so let's not take any chances so we're going to copy that I'm going to verify this then we go to the program and we're now seeing our form appearing. So I'm going to copy the uh, the trades in here and uh, just uh, check that they're vaguely possible um, to increase that. OK, so I think we're good. So what I'm going to do is push the button and uh, there we have some trades appearing. Like so. And uh, if I were to put in the same list of trades again or perhaps trades at uh, slightly different prices just to show you and uh, push the button again we'll see that we're sending some more order, order tickets to the market so again I'm just going to right click and uh, going to cancel the well I'll just leave them for the moment if you wanted to add any more textual information for example change the name of the form you'd simply go to the form and uh, you can see all the the naming information here there's that name but there's also the name in quotes so we could change this to something else for example order entry that would now be reflected on the chart and uh, idea also we could uh, change the literal for the button okay so as I've uh, mentioned on the tutorial page I've made this as simple as possible so that some of the complexity is probably not there, but hopefully it will allow you to look at this more easily and to understand the principles involved. I hope you found this useful. Thank you.